what make Curita so special? This is my personal view on how I see and why I like Curita so much. But one caveat is that Curita is undergoing a tremendous level of investment in development for the, you know, making it native cloud and so very many things that are going around it. Everything that I'm showing here is completely available at, at the time of the making of this video, which is late 2021. So let's get started. What about the sources of telemetry? that Curator uses to do its magic. Well, of course, we have on-prem logs. That's been the initial and the traditional way of actually getting data into Curator. But let me actually show you the variety of them. And to do that, let me go into the log source management component of it. And let's pretend I'm adding a new log source. I can add them in bulk when I have multiple, let's say, Windows machines or servers or whatever, or I can do it individually. What I want to do is scroll down for a while here to show you the great deal of out-of-the-box parsers. In Curator Lingo, these are called DSMs, Device Support Module. But all the things that Curator will immediately be able to start working on its powerful rules with when any one of these log sources are actually uh, being ingested. And again, the, the list is way too expensive and I want to keep these videos short. But one thing that is important to mention is that today many of those log sources don't come on-prem but on cloud. Probably Amazon is the most significant example of those, but also Azure even Google Cloud and IBM's Cloud as well. So all these things uh, can also send data to Curator. And I don't have time to go and I have shown all the videos. Speaking of all the videos, in any one of the videos in my channel, I unless I have forgotten to do so, I put in the video description or every one of them a link to a public box folder. When you actually go to it, uh, you're going to find multiple folders for things that relate to some of the videos that we are discussing in that particular uh, video. Not all of them have uh, ex uh, extra material in them. But at the end of that list, you'll find this PDF you can easily download and then do control F and perform a search and then you find on the most recent videos I, I put the date and the, the duration so you can easily find whatever I'm referring to. And I mentioned those videos because I have dedicated videos to every one of those cloud uh, providers and the different aspects of it. There are way too many things to spend too much time in here. But another source of very important telemetry for Curator are the network flows. And that has been very characteristic of the product from the beginning. And what are the flows that we can get? Well, we can just get the basic flows, which are just getting the TCP IP headers from all the traffic actually going. This is actually a view of the flows I'm getting. I use PFSense at home and I get those to be sent to my curator instance. Let me pause that for a second. And what we can, what, why is this so useful? Well, you get not just the source IP and destination IP, which you may or may not get on some of the logs, but you always get it from the flows, but you get the source port and destination port, and that allows Curator to infer some things about the type of traffic that is actually going there, the protocol application, source by, destination by. So let's say, for example, that you have heard that there's a lot of RDP uh, being used for ransomware attacks. So if I were to figure out whether there has been any RDP traffic in my home, I can actually go here and, and simply add a filter and put here a uh, source or destination port. It should be here, right there. 
and then use the RDP port with 3389 I add that filter well if we play this back we don't see anything in fact I can actually clear the screen by going fully uh, real time there's no RDP traffic going on at this moment but I can actually simply go here back in time let's say let's go back then the last uh, seven days we can actually see oh there's been some traffic should I be worried about well let's let's forget about this one which is actually a real attack of a, of a machine that I put on the internet and it's amazing how quickly these things uh, fall victim uh, for of attacks uh, but uh, what we can see in the other cases is that the destination bytes are zero means meaning because I get the flows I know that somebody has been pinging trying scanning that port to see if it's open from all these IP many of them are malicious and they got no re no re uh, results because uh, that port is actually open again except for the case of this particular attack which uh, I, I'm not going to go into the details in this particular video well, the beautiful thing is that even when you have encryption going on, these TCP IP headers never get encrypted because otherwise the traffic cannot get anywhere. So you can get all this information. But what happened when you don't when, when you have encryption and you don't have man in the middle interception for decrypting that traffic? Well you in Curita you even get uh, JA3 hashings and, and there's a video on that and other technologies that allows you to get I cannot see what actually they did there but I can know where they did what type of malware they, they actually got infected with and so many other things by virtue of the JA3 hash but when you can perform man in the middle interception you can do cool things like getting file hashes of anything that is actually going across the network and here the tool actually computes the file hash of that doc, uh, Word document that is actually infected you get information from the uh, mail headers and you know all sort of good pieces of data that allows Curator to work his magic by virtue of its rules more on that later moving on you can also feed Curator with the results of your vulnerability scanners and you may say well why is that useful well let me show you an example so here's an example more on that later on an offense that fires on the combination of some logs and some flows that allows curator by virtue of that vulnerability data and the telemetry gather gather from the flows and logs to determine that there is a patch that was not applied to a particular host and an attack of the same type of the vulnerability that is reported has actually been seen across that kind of is the value of the of the vulnerability scanner also this allows curator to know more about because the vulnerability scanner gather a bunch of data about what type of device is actually are there so he has that information in his asset database there are videos on that as well but one of the things that I like about how, how special Curator is is that everything that I'm showing you here is analyzed, is processed in real time. This is not stuff that is actually put in there and then you actually go and search for it. No, no, no. This is stuff that all these things are happening the minute that the flow, the minute or the second that the flow and the, and the, and the logs actually come, uh, things are actually processed. Now, one important thing that you have seen me doing so far you have seen me flipping from things that looks like this and things that look like that and this is the new Curator UI that is available I mean they all, they all still exist this is full API based more on APIs later and this is meant to you know be not only look nicer and convey more information on the on the screen by virtue of using the colors and, and the navigation uh, if you see me using too much of the clear view instead of the new dark view uh, is mostly because that piece may not be uh, available at the moment of the video or most likely because I have the muscle memory and I've been using this for so long that I typically use the old UI but one thing that I want to mention and I think it's also very special in Curator is the capability of doing auto-discover 
this, of the discovery of the log sources that it ingests. Uh, let me actually go here to show you. These are the log sources that I have in my Curator system. In fact, the tool is actually telling me that there's an update for that particular uh, parser. We call them DSMs. But notice that the vast majority of mine, six pages of those, have, have this auto-discover flag. Yes. What does that mean? What does that mean is that the minute that Curita receives 25 or more logs in five minutes or less, and that parameter is configurable, by the way, but uh, for something it doesn't know, I, I don't know this host is sending me logs or on port 514. Uh, it really wants to talk to me, evidently. So I'm going to make an effort of peeking inside and see if I can understand the nature of that log. And in the vast majority of the cases that we can see it, seen in here, uh, it actually discovered those and say, yep, I understand that this is a Trend Micro, this is a Microsoft, whatever is the, the component, and I'm going to start actually processing the log, parsing the logs, getting the important information, and, and then getting those powerful rules working for you. Not everything can be auto-discovered, though, uh, because let me actually sort it the other way around and show me the ones that cannot be auto-discovered, and we see here well, many things cloud related it's impossible for you to get this stuff on the cloud just to come to you typically you need to go there with a certificate and a whole bunch of security because those things are public in order for those things to get to curator so not everything can be auto discover but the vast majority of things particularly almost everything on prem can be another thing that is very special on curator is that when it receives and parses the logs it actually normalizes them You'll see what I mean in a second, and index them in order to be able to be searched very quickly, more on searches very soon. So what do I mean by normalizing? Well, for example, if you get a firewall deny from a Cisco box, or from a checkpoint box, or for a Palo Alto box, it will be a firewall deny, and the rules and all the searches and all the logic in Curator that is applicable to a firewall deny will be working regardless of the brand name of it. So when, once it's categorized uh, as such, all the uh, logic works, so you don't have to create a rule for every vendor of type. Uh, same thing with other things like login failure. You get a login failure from Windows, you get a win login failure from this or that. Well, it doesn't matter, the logic works. Let me actually show you that. And this is an app here called the Use Case Manager. It's fantastic and they're by, by six or seven videos I made on this tool, which is extraordinary. But if uh, this is a good way of really looking at all the good logic that Curator has on his rules, but if we want to search for a rule, let me actually log in for login failure. Show me all the rules that have to do with login failure. How many do you have out of 1,045 that I have in my system? 60 of them do. Let me actually click on any one of them on the first one. And here I see the logic on the rule. Again, more on this is actually described on, on those videos. But when I click here on the log source types, notice that it says, well, all these things, the different brands and stuff, works specifically for this particular rule. So, and that is being done because those the taxonomy, that's what it's called the taxonomy in Curita, is actually all the things are actually indexed and normalized. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the, the log, the ingestion of the log, is that in Curator, if, even though I show you a vast list of uh, parsers that exist out of the box, if you need to create one for something that is something of your own, that there's not a public parser available for that, uh, you can easily do that, and the tool in it is a visual tool called the DSM Editor. And whether those are new logs that comes in JSON, Leaf, Ceph, any format, or if it's more on the traditional way, which uh, uh, the tool will even build the regex for you. So it's actually very easy to create one. And I have done several videos on, the, on that tool as well. Let's finish this part one of the video. Uh, uh, talking about the curator rules, that most of the time is function in life is to alert you about something, and they do that by firing an offense. Let me show you an example of how you investigate offenses in Curator. So let's actually investigate the first offense that actually fires here. And at a glance, 
we can actually see that there are three rules that contribute to this offense and we can actually get an, an idea that this is actually somebody who tripped into some kind of malware we see the time frame of the actual events and but the, in the traditional way that you will investigate this uh, in a tool unlike Curator is by you you need to get more understanding and you will go into the actual logs only nine logs nine events actually uh, contribute uh, and make that rule actually fire. Let's look at them. So if you are experienced to these things, you know, well, this is blue code, this is probably, it would indicate me what URLs the guy actually went, that are bad, and notice that he's marking those as critical. And there is some EDR technology in here. Let's actually take a look at what the EDR technology is telling me about what the guy did. Now I can actually go here and you know, look at the actual payload of the of the entire logs, and we can see the data. Oh, here's a hash. So, in a standard non-curator thing, you will grab these, go to virus total, paste it, and begin to answer some questions: Who's behind this? Is this a false positive or not? Uh, how can I better protect my organization? And uh, that can be time-consuming. Let me actually show you why in curator you don't have to do that. Let's actually go back to that screen. And we can actually see that Curator already investigated this and it's telling me, you know, the MITRE attacks and techniques that were used and actually is giving me a graph that will indicate to me all the questions that I will manually be looking for otherwise. Let's analyze that in a minute or less. So let me take some information out because there's so much information even for those nine events. These are the nine events that actually happen. But already Curator has put portray them, they have you know, graphed me those in this uh, way, in, in the case everything started here on this yellow stuff, this is a critical server, uh, everything in red is malicious and I don't have to do that copy paste silly game. Uh, if, I mean, if I want to understand why this is malicious I can click on any one of those things and see well how do you came to that conclusion that this is bad and in here we can see that FireEye, Bitdefender, Mandiant, uh, the X-Force, uh, McAfee, not even virus totally in this case, but sometimes it is. So all this is telling me that, you know, from all those sources, I know that stuff is actually bad. Uh, so we, we, you get that, that analysis there. So it's a time saver there. It's a little bit of automation, but there's more. Let me actually bring the blue, the second stage of that analysis. This is actually saying, well, advisor knows the, the Facebook of the underworld, I like to call that, is who is who in the bad zoo, who is related to what, which organization uses this, this, this type of technique, this type of malware, who shares us with this and that. So based on that, advisor is saying, well, these pieces in blue, which are not in your offenses, did not happen on your system, but they have one or two degrees of separation with the stuff that you have. So you might be interested in it and you can actually zoom in in here and say, well, you know, here seems to be that the, the Chinese are on, uh, have a relationship with this IP, which has a relationship with one that wasn't your offense. And you may actually want to do that, but it will be a way just to waste just to leave this like that. You can actually bring all that blue stuff either automatically or manually in Curator and put it in some tables that Curator uses with his rules called reference set. Now, from this point on, should anyone touches any one of those IOCs, you'll get to know it. But it's just more, more automation. You will probably at this point say, well, let me actually perform a search, a manual search in Curator and find out uh, anybody who had touched any one of these blue or gray stuff. Well, you don't have to do it. The tool already did it for you. And that's what is in here. This stuff in green is actually telling me that this is, when I perform that search automatically for you, I found all this information and in fact there's another offense here that is related to this, so we don't want you to miss that. Again, that's an example of how the, the not only finds those things for you, curator automatically, but also speeds up, automates and facilitates your searches. More on the second part of this video.